Good morning and happy Saturday. Um, sorry about the delay. I'm a one man operation, so we don't have any production. I just decided to do this live because I wanted to show the people out there that are interested in Baji Pigwa, Bagua, or Praying Mantis. Three exercises from each style that I enjoy because it builds an understanding of everything else beyond it. Okay, so without too much waste of time, we'll get right into it. We're going to start with the Baji. Now, when we practice here at Ohio Wutan, we don't separate them. But for purposes of general understanding, I'm going to do that today. So we're going to do a few exercises that are strictly baji that I, I attribute to giving me insight throughout my martial arts career. The first one is the one punch. You can't do anything without going to the one punch. Now the one punch is important in more ways than one. It was the basic core training exercise for the morning ritual of the security guards back when Grandmaster Liu uh, had master, uh, well, my master, Master Tony Young, working directly with him and for him. And that is a thousand of them every morning. Okay, I'll go through the basic first step, the second step, and the final step. The basic first step we're going to do very slowly. So you're going to turn your foot. You're going to slowly bring this up. Now you're going to do resistance, opposition. This is a concept that's used throughout Liyoho, Baji, Pigwa, all these different styles. Opposition meaning my hip is going to be opposing my upper body, causing a natural tense feeling in the core that doesn't come from deliberate tension. So we're working against our own body. So I think uh, another word for it is uh, biometrics. Um, I'm sure there's 10 more. Gonna be silent and then let go. Turn your foot. If you get really good at this, you should be able to not touch the ground with the other side. It's a little hard on the mats, but. Turn your foot. Try not to touch. Noodle loose. Turn the foot. Try not to touch. Noodle loose. Okay. Second stage. This time we're going to add more of a charging step. Okay, I kind of did it already once, but we're still working in silence because we need to relax. If you cannot relax, you cannot throw the projectile far enough. And when I say far enough, I mean through the target. If you practice the one punch properly, you come to understand, well, actually, this is not just body, this is all martial arts. If you learn your art at its core, you, you come to understand that the weapon, which is the hands in this case, or whatever you're throwing at the target, is separate from the operator. Okay. I'm still going to do the same thing, but I'm going to circle a little bit. So I'm 
We're not going to do this. Only the waist. So that this is a club. It's, it's just a an adamant object that I'm using. Now, as you progress, you're going to want to make it one motion. Okay. And even though this seems more advanced than the basic Baji One Punch, which has a stomp, it is not in terms of you're not really thinking about anything. You're trying to break down the basics at the, at the lowest level. So the lowest level to me is forget about your weapon. Only think about the target. Keep going off camera. <laughs> Like I said, I don't have any production crew or anything, so just bear with me. Again. Okay, that's enough of those. Now we're gonna put it all together. There's a million different reasons why we use stomping and baji. I'm not going to go through all of them. But let's suffice to say, one of the most important ones is to make the bones more dense in the lower part of the body. Because when you start getting into serious impact, your bones have to be able to handle it. So the stomping, besides giving you a perfect timing cue, so that's the second reason. There's more, many, many, many more, but we're just going to stick with the two. Timing cue and bone density. Now, I'm an old man <laughs> in my 50s, so I use mats because years and years and years of stomping on concrete and hard earth can cause long-term damage so you have to be very careful and actually the stomping is more of a sinking but there is definitely a stomping which everybody's i'm sure seen in body so we're going to start timing everything the, the stop is going to time but we're going to put our weight in one place in space okay one place in space once you get that very extremely basic concept, it'll make a lot more sense to you when you start getting to uh, the upper levels. It'll it'll just your mind will open. Okay, one space. I mean, one place in space. This still applies. I'm not gonna do this. I'm touching the ground on this side to keep my balance right now because these are mats. They're very, very flexible. And I'm trying to teach not fall down. <laughs> so that one place in space, that's part one. So putting the second foot down is cheating. But you're not supposed to hold this for very long after so many years of practicing. This is just a breakdown. So one place in space looks like this. We're going to keep the foot down. 
Then from this coil position, remember, everything previously said about the punch is already in this. So we're in opposition, silent. I don't know, not silent, I'm teaching, but silent. Breathing down all the way down to your belly button. Make a big boot of belly. And release. Now you might have saw that I put my foot back. That's another timing cue in early training. Because we're only doing two step instead of one, you can give yourself little exercises in between that will help you understand exactly what's going on mechanically. In actuality, this is one motion, so you're gonna go, Oh, man. Oh, man. And then there's no backing up, okay? There's no backing up, there's no wind up, none of that. But if you're just working on separate exercises, so this is one. Now, I have weight on this foot because of the mat. If I was on concrete, it wouldn't be necessary. Let's do that for a second. So we have a little bit more understanding of what I'm talking about here. Let's see if we have any concrete physical things for the body. Okay. I don't want to do too many of those. It's not good reading because I just described it. <clears throat> now, even though the mats are a liability for filming, they're an absolute asset for training because I'm always on unequal ground. And that helps. I used to get the same uh, results on the beach when I lived in Florida. Okay. That was the first body. The second one, and, and the reason why I use that one first is because if you're not actually a body practitioner and you just want to learn punching power, you can do that. Now, the next one is very body specific. And it's called the bear walk. Now, there are ways to break the bear walk down into several different layers. And somebody that practices body their whole life and wants to be a master, you'll have to catch me on the Patreon because I don't have time to go through all that today. I got a class to teach here shortly. But Suffice to say, we'll do the first layer and get an understanding of that concept that we just used in the one punch, which is one spot or one place in space. So you're not going to do any of the uh, Pequot waste stuff or anything at this level. This level is just to concentrate on one place in space. And I don't want you jumping because that causes distraction. And don't worry about the stomping yet. So you're going to pick up your foot. You're going to extend it out as if you were falling to a 45. And you're going to stop yourself. This is going to be repeated later on, you'll see. There goes the mat. That's okay. We need that. Relax. 
I, I suggest trying it on sand, actually. That's even worse than this for gravel. Or in the wintertime, we use ice. So nothing fancy. Now my foot's not touching the ground, so you do hundreds, thousands, 10,000 times 10,000 if you're an actual Baji practitioner. If you're just trying to learn better balance, this is also excellent. Okay, we're gonna, that's the, uh, the second one. Now we're gonna go to the third Baji exercise, which I find extremely useful. And it's just, it's in uh, Shao Baji. And it's the backhand punch, okay? We use big spears to increase power. I'm sure you've seen them. This one's made out of Mojave. And it's probably, I don't know, maybe 20, 25 pounds. I don't know, I haven't weighed it, but it's, I mean, it's thick. Like even at this end, it's, uh, Almost as well, it's not quite as thick as my wrist, but there's my hand, so you can see how thick it is. And as it gets down to the other end, it's way thicker, way, way, way thicker. And it goes down evenly. It took a long time for me to make this. So, and this one's, I think. It's about 11 feet long, maybe a little less. It's 10 and a half. This one's over 12 with the, with the tip. Now, this one is not as heavy. This one's here made out of aqua, which is a lighter hardwood, a little bit softer, more flexible. Um, in China, they use wax wood. They use several different types of woods. Wax wood's the most responsive. Um, but when you get to a certain point, if you're a bigger guy, and I don't mean tall, <laughs> I mean core built, you know, I'm built like a barrel, or even my disciple, who is a bigger guy strength wise, um, one of my disciples, obviously they're not all that big. Do waxwood can break? Um, I know that's controversial. <laughs> A lot of people said waxwood has never been broken, but I'm here to tell you when you get the right physical type, then it breaks. This one is a lot harder to break, okay? But it's still very flexible. The reason why I'm bringing this out is because I want to show you that punch. And then I'm going to use two weapons to demonstrate it, and that'll be the end of the body lesson, okay? That spear is very hard to hold up with one hand, even though it's not as heavy as a mahogany, it's probably one of the heaviest dot chunks. Um, probably the second heaviest one I've ever made. <clears throat> anyway, I'm going to use the front hand to draw out. Same thing, so we're not changing anything. When I say draw out, I mean, the front hand has got to be just as active as the back hand. And remember, this isn't for fighting. This is for training explosiveness. And we'll get into why later. But right now, I'm sure if you had body armor on and everybody was suited up with swords or spears, this would be excellent for fighting. But we'll go over why it won't help you in actual combat, hand-hand -hand combat other than explosiveness in a minute. This hand is going to go here and here. The right shoulder is going to be in opposition. This concept is in Leo the Praying Manus and Baba as well. So this shoulder is going to be over top of this knee at the end of this. With one exception, we're going to let go. And Leo praying mantis or Bagua, it is always continuous. There's no end to the energy. Baji 
teaches you to let the energy go through a target. Now, at the, at the higher level, you can put them together very easily, but you have to understand how to let go of the energy first. So this is going to draw the energy. So the entire body, left and right side, left and right side of the brain, all together at one time. So this has to be as energetic or kinetic, I guess would be a better word. This has to be as kinetic <clears throat> as this. And this is where men are uh, actually a little bit behind females. When I train females, I never have a problem with this. Females aren't taught from a young age that you got to have a hard fist and a strong arm and, you know, put all your muscle into your punch and that makes you a good puncher. That's absolutely incorrect, okay? The arm has zero to do with it. Now, that I will give you training your knuckles is very important. And training your wrist strength without even closing the fist is even more important because a tight and closed fist goes nowhere fast. A tight and closed fist goes nowhere fast. Try it. Tighten your fist as hard as you can and try to throw a fast punch. As soon as you tighten your fist as hard as you can, this tightens, this tightens, and this tightens. Can't move your arm. So, females learn faster. So, those of you that are out there that are extremely strong men, take heed because this will save you a lot of time and training. Forget what you learned as a kid. This is just a piece of rope, okay? And so is this actually. But the only difference in the parry being attached to the waist, okay? So that gives it reinforcement. This is just a piece of rope. Now, there's a lot more dynamics that I could add to this. I'm trying to simplify it for you. Just focus on letting go. Okay, the back leg is not being put out on purpose. Back leg comes out on its own. The heavier the weapon, the further the back leg comes out. I'm getting pretty old. I don't know if I'm going to do with that chunk, <laughs> especially on camera. Well, my luck, my arm will keep going with it. Okay, so the same thing applies. The kinetics on the left have to be the same as the right. The only difference is your thought. So it doesn't matter where your hand goes, it matters the kinetics. There's a little bit different energy explosion with this than this. We don't have time for that today. <clears throat> well, I'm, not, I'm not gonna use the popper one. <laughs> Undoubtedly the injury, I'll use the ash one. The ash one's real actually, it's got a, Got a real spearhead. It's a European spirit, but it'll demonstrate my intention. So the premise is the weapon is a lot heavier, so your body's gonna do something that's much more dramatic at the end of the strike. Letting it fall because you don't want to hurt the rotator cuff. It's not worth it. <clears throat> Anytime that you try to do these extreme exercises as an older person, tendons, all those things need to be tended to. And obviously, you need to consult your own doctor before you exercise. Because I'm definitely not an expert. I'm nothing but.
Okay, next exercise. We're going to go through these rather fast because I'm obviously taking up a lot of time in the first part. As you can tell, I love Baji. But Pigua has already bled into my Baji, so it helps a lot. This one's my favorite. Mouth closed. Now I use my eyes like a gun sight. If I'm on the left side, I'm using my left eye. If I'm on the right side, I'm using my right eye. So this bleeds over into my firearms practice too. So. If you're wondering, say your left eye dominant, how do you get the focus? Well, what you do at first is uh, kind of squint the other eye, the one that you don't want to focus on, and that'll help the other one come in because your body will naturally compensate. So I'm right eye dominant, so I don't have to worry about it here. But you don't want to close the other eye because you miss a lot of stuff and it's a bad habit. <clears throat> Okay, that's the first one. Again, the arms are just projectors. Now the next one can be played at many different levels. And when I say levels, I mean variations to increase your, your capabilities and close range. And the second part is the part that everybody focuses on. And that's fine. I like the first part. So, you know, there's four different exercises as well. There's eight actually, but the four major exercises of Pigua. One of them is called um, cow. And the cow part of the exercise is glorious. But the pea part, <laughs> of said cow to me is the most enlightening. And that's just my opinion. Because you know we got cow all over the place. We got cow and baji combination. We got cow everywhere. Cows everywhere. But the P is crazy if you can concentrate on it. So the first time you do P, P mean chop. You're gonna take something like this. This is a wooden knife practice with and you're going to learn the fact that at the end of p your hand straight down it doesn't go back and i'm sorry at the end of the first motion of the cow exercise which is a p motion chop this chop it ends up straight down okay not to be confused with the first exercise p which actually goes over the top of the head next to the ear Slaps against the body and opens up. That's not what we're doing. We're doing the other one. The other one doesn't have a wind up at the highest level, which the highest level is the basics. So when I do P, leading into cow, we'll do the slow motion. Now the head still turns, and in, in combatives, we'll, we'll go over that some other time. It's all over the Patreon. I'll tell you why. But for the exercise, the explosive part, it has to be Released. This is not a circular motion. There is a release at the end of it. Okay. It is circular in the fact that it has chance of change. Don't get me wrong. But the release is straight. 
whether or not the energy is spiraling, the release is direct. You have to intend to release at a perfectly positioned point. So this helps. The first one, I'm gonna go all the way down. Now, when I said variations, as you practice and you become, like I was talking about earlier, more focused on tactical considerations, things must become extremely tighter. So, you know, you look more like this. Suffice it to say, that is just one application of that motion. The next one, and the final P body exercise, which I find the most integrating, it is the basic. <laughs> I'm doing the old man version. You're supposed to go all the way down. All the way down. All the way down. All the way down. And that integrates left and right. Look left, one scooping left. Look right, one scooping right. <clears throat> okay. Oh yeah, I promised to say something about that uh, um, that uh, one that that one punch from behind in English or sidestep one punch, whatever you want to call it. So this Whether on the street or in an MMA ring or anything else is going to get you killed. Okay. Back to bottom. Or not back to bottom. Starting bottom. My favorite, favorite, favorite exercise. Because I had to do it for like 10 years. I, mean, I literally had to do Bagua basics at Shao Kahn for 10 years before I was allowed to do it in my Bagua. And I was struggling through it. <laughs> and uh, at first, it was like a difficult situation for me mentally. But after a while, it became normal. And now, I thank God every morning when I wake up that my master did that to me because it taught me more about Bible than anything else that I learned afterwards. So this one's absolutely amazing. Um, and all we're going to do, it's, so, it's not simple, don't get me wrong, it's very difficult. And it's even more difficult on a slippery surface. So I'm in a great place because these, this is the back of the mats which is basically like the strongest indoor outdoor carpet you could possibly imagine. I've even dropped my sharp sword on here and not cut it. That's how tough this stuff is. So but now we also have the benefit of the mat being very difficult to even stand on stable. So you could do this in sand and feel about the same. 
I do it on ice. I wouldn't recommend anybody else do it on ice. I've gotten hurt many times doing it. But I'm, I'm a weirdo like that. I'm going to push every, everything to the limit for myself. So I'm going to go pick up the foot, stretch it out. Now I know all the, uh, the purists, the Bible purists are going to be like, oh, let's go a little slower. I don't care about that. I care about one place in space and complete and utter body control. And the head moving in a very flat trajectory. And I will reveal the reason for that and only that. There's many, but I'll, I'll reveal the most important in my eyes. And that's because you cannot track a target with a bobble head. And it's also the reason why when I teach fighting, especially for uh, people that are going to be in the ring, that it's great to move your head and split, but it has to be done in a very intentional way because you have to be able to track. There's ways to increase tracking, but this is the very fundamental way. So the goal is to keep your head flat and to move forward and stop with one foot off the ground. Don't worry about your hands. There's advanced versions of this that you do things with your hands, but we're just doing this one. How do you know if your head's pretty still? Focus on one point. Okay. We took up a big chunk there. And that's the goal. Big chunk. Stop. Big chunk. Stop. So you keep taking off bigger and bigger chunks you do it with your head flat the old days they used to do it on the bricks then they'd space the bricks out so on and so forth you just stop yourself okay to me that's the most important body exercise if i if i only could teach one to anybody that would be the one Okay, the second one is because of the, the core. My second favorite is the close. So I'm going to take the right hand and close underneath the left hand. And I'm going to do it like this. I'm going to go one. This, this hand does not go around. This hand goes through your own body. So I'm going to go through my body. Tighten. This is pushing this way, this is pushing that way, this is pushing this way, this is pushing that way, and this is pushing that way. Then if I can breathe still, I'm gonna tighten no more. Then relax. Then I'm gonna take this side. We go down, drill through the body, not around it. Now I'm not doing this type of tension. I'm doing a twist to where everything can't go any further and I can barely breathe. I'm hold. Normally for eight breaths. And as you breathe, you're gonna constrict more and more, just like your blood constrict, okay, or whatever. Pipe on. Okay, that's my second thing. And my third one is this one. At the very fundamental level.
that one gets far more complicated. Okay, praying in this. I'm going to stick with the Leah Hub version because it's my favorite. I play it a little bit more explosively to the uh, great distress of my colleagues. <laughs> it's uh, considered to be incorrect, but that's fine. By most of them, some of them not. So the first exercise is this one. Okay, connects left side, right side, equal. Only think about the target. So you see how the logic punch that I did earlier was connected to this one, I hope. And this is actually a very, very useful way to use your praying mantis expertise to help your bhaji and vice versa. So if I go here, I'm tight. Okay, just enough to keep something from the carotid area in the eye. And that there, so that I can return real quick, okay? Very basic, but it becomes a thousand times a thousand times a thousand, because you can go from here to this direction, to this direction, to this direction, to this direction, and you can do two in a step, or three or four or five, depending on how fast you are. Okay, that's the very first one. My next favorite training man is basic will also come from uh, we have a on. And then maybe the third one will be from seven star. Okay, so this is not exclusive to Leo the Pong on, obviously. In fact, Guy Messel, he was fond of saying that these are all children of the same mother. So you'll see these motions in all the different styles. In fact, the one I just did is in Taiji Meihua Tama Chuan with a little variation. Okay. Played correctly. It is not like this. It's only like this if you're 300 pounds. It's like this. The whole body. So we're going to do one side. And you'll even see this in Tai Chi, like a Chen's Tai Chi campus. So it's the same motion. The difference is they come out of each other. Okay, so same thing as uh, Xing Yi, as they say. Some say, not everybody, the little praying mantis is the shiny of the praying mantis with a very soft velvet glove on top of it. I would disagree with that, but whatever. They say it, so I'm saying it. Oh, you know, just uh, living the dream. All right, that's the last one. And then I'm going to uh, have to teach. <laughs> my disciple just had to So I should say my top disciple. Okay. Next one. Last one. Right out of them. To practice that, you start off with this type of thing. So I always say if your nipples had handles on them, that's where your fist goes. 
And then you start to get the right rotation so that when you initially grab, now I'm going to I realize it's a bow stance. But the body is bled into me so much that it's hard to pull that off. Okay, that's three from each. And so I hope I delivered everything I said I would. And if you want to learn more about what we do here at Wutan, Ohio, Wutan, T A N G, Ohio, just get a hold of me at patreon.com slash. Godspear CQB. And there's hundreds of hours, literally. Okay, thank you very much.